Hey there, Allison Chainmail here, and I'm here to bring you another tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to edge your scale mail. It's not dirty, it's just what it's called, as far as I know. This is something I've been getting a lot of requests for, so I'm going to try and teach you how to do it. You can jump ahead to the tutorial, I'll put some durations down below in a pinned comment, that way you can skip ahead to the portion that you need in a comment down below. Also, I get a lot of questions about where I get my materials. I get everything that I use from the Ring Lord. I do not tumble my own, I don't anodize my own, I don't even cut my own rings. So this is simply a weaving tutorial. So I've been getting a lot of requests about how to keep your edges from flipping on your scale mail and also how to create a straight line with your scale mail instead of always having an angle. There's a way to do that, it's called edging. It's basically creating a four in one on your scales with your rings so that it keeps your edges from flipping up or doing funny things. Things I've used it for is for extending my Red Sonia butt flap. Basically, if I didn't edge this, I'd have to make it longer at the top in order to get it to be longer at the bottom. But that's not ideal. It's gonna come out looking very wide rather than like tapering down. So what I did was I edged this here so that I can extend the length in certain spots and that way it can come to a different type of point down here. I'm still working on what's the best looking for this one in particular, but that is how I was able to make the flap longer. And I did that on the front as well. I've also been able to use it for my bras. If the triangle isn't covering enough, then I can just extend the length down and that way it covers more of the boob. <laughs> I use it for my vest so I can create a straight line, has it along the edges here, so it creates a straight line. It's easier to get in and out of. Instead of having it be a solid piece that you pull over your head, you can pull it over your head and tighten it as needed on the sides. Right now it's with twine. That way that people with different body types can wear the vest. So yeah, let's uh, show you how to do this stuff. So to start with, I'm going to use something that I've already been working on. I'll demonstrate with a lighter ring so you can see it better. So maybe we want to create a straight vertical line of scales along the sides here rather than a triangle. To start with, we'll add some loose rings to the last two scales in the row. So instead of adding another scale on, we're just going to put a ring. Then we're going to take this lighter ring here and we're going to add it to the center like a four-in-one weave. So we're just connecting the two rings that are still connected to the scales, the inner scales, and then connect them through these outer rings we just placed on the outside. So it looks like a four-in-one. If you don't know what a four-in-one weave is yet, there are some tutorials in the description. Then we're gonna come over to the other side and do the same thing. We're just gonna add some loose rings to the edge of the skins. And we'll take our light ring and weave it through so that it is the center ring connecting these four rings. So you're just going in and under the bottom two rings and through and over the top two rings. So we've just basically added another horizontal row here and finished it off. So now we can continue to add scales to the bottom and carry the weave down. I'm gonna speed this part up because you're just basically adding scales like you normally would. If you don't know how to do that, then check out my other tutorial. So again, we're creating an edge by adding this light colored ring into the rings that are connected to the inner scales and the two open rings we have on the sides of the scales so that we can create another row going downwards. Here on the other side, just adding another scale to the edge, and we're going to add another loose ring here. We're not connecting it to another scale. And again, we're taking this light colored ring and we're going to weave it through so it creates a little four in one here. This can get a little tricky, especially if you're working with smaller rings and scales because it's kind of a tight fit, but you'll get the hang of it. Just try it without monster claws, maybe. 
So now you can kind of see how we're just extending these rows straight down rather than have them taper back inwards. Now we can use the same method to go straight up and over so that we can create a square. So we'll add this loose ring here and then we're going to build up with another scale. It helps to kind of lay it out the way you want it before. So just add that there. and you just keep building up to fill in the space. And you can keep going to fill in your square, but I'm gonna show you how to start off your weave with a horizontal line. So you just connect your first row scale I'm just going to speed this up because it's pretty standard. Now we're just adding a set of two rings to each of these top scales here. Again, we're adding this light colored ring to the center like a four in one weave. We're gonna do this all along the top. We're putting this in the space that is above the center scale. Keep going along the top here, adding those loose rings to the top row. Voila, that is what your top row looks like. And you can keep building off of it. We're going to work towards having straight vertical lines down the sides again, making this top row a little bit longer so we can see it as it goes down. In case you're having trouble seeing, this is a view from the top and sides of that ring going through those four rings. Now we're going to do the same thing we were doing earlier and just build straight down. So now you can see if you want to square a rectangle, you can just keep building straight down since we have a straight line across. We're just continuing to build that square. Now I'm going through and adding those loose rings along the sides here. And again, we're putting that light ring through the center. Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble right here because of uh, fingernails.
feel like I'm making this look kind of hard just because I have these claws on, but it's really not that hard to get the ring through the other, other ring. Um, sorry about that. So here's what it looks like when you're done. You can flip it over and it's not going to flay out as much as usual. You have a straight line and they tend to fall more consistently as they move around. So now I'm adding a triangular line to the bottom so you can see the difference in how it falls when you edge it versus not edged. Okay, see how they just flip all the way out? They kind of go all over the place, they can be knocked around. So if you want it to look like a cleaner diamond for it to stay together, then you just would edge the sides like we've been doing, add those loose rings there, and then connect them like a four-in-one, but this time we're just not adding that fourth ring. the piece de resistance. Looky there. It's not all over the place. Beautiful. So there you have it. Go on and get flippy with it and give it a shot. Um, it can be used for many things. It's pretty useful. You can build it out however you want and it won't look all crazy daisy. So that was the edging tutorial. Leave a like if this was helpful. Comment down below with other uses you have for it. I'm still newer to making chain mail. I don't know everything. I think this stuff is really cool. I think people's creativity is really amazing. So leave a comment down below with what you've been able to do thanks to these tutorials and spread the love because we all like this stuff. Well, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and I will catch you guys hopefully not on the flip side because we just edged our scales. So now that they're not flipping, right? That was dumb. I'll catch you on the flip side.